Tell them what you'll find on the beach. Heading up Cathead Creek. From Cathead Creek we turned up Otter Creek. It's looking like a swamp now, but it's really an area that used to be rice paddies back in the 1700, 1800 time period and trees have taken over now. Heading off down another canal from the old rice paddies. Heading kind of cross country now through this area of cypress trees. Threading our way through. Beautiful area. Making a big U-turn up here as we meander through these old and made canals from the former rice paddy plantation. A lot of maneuvering for these long boats. There's a section of old rice paddies that haven't been overgrown by trees. Waiting for the takeout. Postel Creek. Yeah. Meandered through the uh, salt marsh for an hour now. The open Atlantic out before me. Osprey searching for fish. And that's Sea Island where we're heading for our box lunch. Small Beagle. Well, it took a while for us to get it by us. Man, they're looking at y'all sandwiches. <laughs> Horseshoe crabs. Two of them. It is mating season. Here's a ghost crab. You hear the wind howling out here on the end of the island. You're taking a picture of my sand dollar. <laughs> yes. <laughs> still has its fuzz, so the sand dollar may still be alive. It's a moon snail. Blood art clam. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And if we could find them right here, it's got this straight line of teeth. And so this is a blood arc, and so is this one. Now, if we happen to find, so are those. If we happen to find a heart shaped cockle, it's a little bit different in that this is a little bit rounded, and you've got three teeth as instead of this row of straight teeth. Isn't that pretty? It's got almost a turtle shell, the, mm -hmm. you know, the way it's moved. And this one, I believe, was a female. And she is. The female has a wider pouch in the stomach, in the middle, whereas the male has a has a more narrow one. And you can tell that this female recently gave birth. Uh, yep, he's probably dead already. No, he's not. He's he just moving. moved. All right, we'll go put him in the water. Yeah, go, go, out water. go rescue the whelk. Making the crossing now back over to the same side of the island for our takeout. Now we'll pass some of the lovely oceanside homes. The bus tour of St. Simons Island showed us the lighthouse and also the home where Margaret Mitchell lived while riding Gone with the Wind. The British defended their territory here against the Spanish.
Church of John and Charles Wesley. This is the rebuilt Christ Church, 1884. Now the fourth window down is our Tiffany window. John and Charles Wesley preaching under the libel. Those are Azaleas. Yeah, that's it. These are all Azaleas. But this is the Camellia. Thank you. Getting ready for our day three. Got the whole group today. Instead of just half the group. It's 24 people and five guides. Sound now, heading from the mainland over to St. Simon's Island. Wind and waves have really picked up now. Two foot. Over in the... We're taking a little break on the shore for a moment after battling the waves and wind to get across the sound. I found several horseshoe crabs that had been overturned by the wave action, so I straightened them out. And both of them immediately started digging. Heading out into the even bigger waves now in order to get out around a sandbar and head back to where we're supposed to take out. I'm going to have to stop taking movies now and concentrate and paddle full force against the mounting three foot waves. Put in for the Chatilla River. We're gonna head up river, but with the tide going our way. Lunch on the Satilla. Finished a section. It's very windy, giving us some white froth on the waves. Finally, the wind is at our back, but all too briefly. The Satilla Flotilla. Beautiful cypress grove we've been going through here. Okay, that bridge signals our takeout. Uh, and really the difference between non venomous snakes and venomous snakes is pretty uh, significant. If you just look at this snake, and again, if you don't know what you're looking for, I always say you're too close to back up. But on a non venomous snake, the head is what we call an oval shaped, and a venomous snake is an arrowhead shaped head. But on venomous snakes here in the United States, yeah, vertical pupils usually means it's a venomous snake. A non venomous snake has a circle pupil. And so if you can see its pupils, your wings are too close. You need to back you up. If you see its way. pupils, you're too close. <laughs> That's right. This snake and other types of king snakes, there's lots of varieties, are immune to venom. He will go after venomous snakes. And so this guy, a lot of times I'll tell people, these are the snakes you actually want to keep around your house. Not well, around your house, but in your yard, because you will not find another venomous snake around 
I see. Come on, I appreciate it. Why don't you kiss it? <laughs> now, this is a yellow bellied satyr for obvious reasons. Um, they have no teeth, but they have a razor sharp beak. And the razor sharp beak is really meant for uh, snipping things off, eating all sorts of insects. They'll eat um, frogs, they'll eat everything. And also, they'll eat alligators. In the winter, they will nip at alligators, they'll eat their little toes.